Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Discriminating Gamer. Say, why was the trebuchet so rude? It was an offensive weapon. Ladies and gentlemen, today we're going to go ahead and take a look at 1565 Siege of Malta from Worthington Games. Hello everybody, we'll get back to the review in just a second. I just want to take a moment to ask you to go ahead and check out and subscribe to my other channel, that is Cody Carlson PhD, where we talk about military history and books on history and fun things like that. Please check that out, please subscribe, and now, back to the review. In 1565, Siege of Malta from Worthington, one player takes on the role of either the Knights defending Malta or the Turks attempting to take Malta for their empire. Now, the game board is essentially a map of the harbor at Malta. Now, you have, of course, morale tracks running uh, on the side of the board where each uh, belligerent can place their uh, blocks to mark their morale. But you also have various spaces throughout the board where you're going to put the white blocks for the knights or the green blocks for the Turks. There are also spaces for the Turkish ships to move and maneuver in the harbor, and you also have um, spaces on Sicily for the knights to be reinforced. Now this game in the Great Siege series is not unlike previous games I've looked at, 1759 Quebec and 414 BC uh, Siege of Syracuse. Essentially how the game plays out is here, you can of course as I say play either side. <clears throat> you pick whichever side you want to be, say the Knights, and then you would grab the Turkish deck. Now you can kind of thin the deck out or add more cards depending on how you want to play for difficulty. But what you do on your turn is you have an order sheet. So you decide what order you want to do. You know, you can kind of do skirmishing, or you can defend the harbor, or you can move units around the board. There's different things you can do. And then, once you have selected what you want to do, you uh, place your uh, card there that says that you selected that order for the turn. And then you go ahead and you draw a card from the uh, Turkish deck. You'd look at that deck, and it would give some specific scenarios. It may cancel the order you did. It may make the order more difficult. It may do other things on the board. Then it's going to have an A, B, C, or D uh, section where it's going to say what the Turks are doing. You're going to look in your order sheet because uh, each order you have, you can select has its own track of A, B, C, or D. You're going to look on that uh, on that grid. Then you're going to roll a die. Well, you roll the die and then check the number on that grid, and it's going to say what happens. Now, the knights may have casualties, the Turks may have casualties, or one side or the other may lose morale on the morale track. If you take a casualty, you automatically lose one morale. Now you also have the option to take aggressive actions and after you resolve the basic part of your uh, order you can go ahead, you, you roll another die that you consult a track for there which kind of shows what's going to happen in that instance as well. Typically if you select the aggressive uh, commander action you're actually going to roll two die at the same time. Uh, the first die is going to be for your um, original order and then the second die usually a black die will be for your uh, for your aggressive action which usually can have some more consequential results now the game can end in different ways if ever one side or the other's morale track gets to zero that side automatically loses if you get completely through the deck then the uh, knights win the turks sell for home the text uh, the, the turks will lose but also, too, if three key points, three key fortresses on the board all fall, uh, they have no more blocks in them, then the Turks win the game. So depending on which side you are playing, if you're able to fulfill your objectives or knock the enemy all the way down to zero, then you win 1565 Siege of Malta. So 1565 Siege of Malta, uh, again, there, there's some more stuff going on here, but that's just kind of the basic gameplay. Uh, this is part of, I say, the state or the uh, the Great Sieges uh, game, which we saw with uh, those other games I mentioned, the 414 BC Syracuse, Siege of Syracuse, and then the 15 um, or the 1759 Siege of Quebec. 
And they're all great games. These are all really fun games. There's some great history and flavor text here, but they are, of course, necessarily abstracted quite a bit. But it's fun to because you have real decisions. You do have dice rolls, you do have cards, so there's a lot of chance, but there's also ways here to mitigate your luck, mitigate your chance, and critically, as I say, there are key decisions. Every round, you are picking which decision you want to take. Now, again, you can argue, but it's still chance what the card comes up, so there's chance here. Okay. There's chance. I don't mind that. I think it's a lot of fun. Von Clausewitz tells us war is the realm of chance. Um, these are really fun games that play in under an hour. Now, this one in particular is interesting um, because, again, it's it's you're the, either the, the knights or the Turks. And, and just kind of the, the, the strategic objectives of the knights trying to take the forts, the, the, the knights trying to weather the storm and hold out and bring in reinforcements. Um, all this stuff is, is, is really interesting and it, and it plays very well. This particular design was Murray Suckling, who's produced some absolutely outstanding games, Chancellorsville 1863, Freeman's Farm 1777. Uh, so I'm, I'm very, very happy with this, uh, with this designer, and I think he's done a great job here. Uh, the nice thing about Siege of, of uh, Syracuse is you can play it two-player. Uh, there's a good two-player mode there. Um, with with siege of uh, but you can only play Athens in the single player here in in Quebec and in and in Malta you can play either side and I like that too because again it's 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 a different challenge you know in this game you're playing the knights and you're thinking oh the Turks have got it so easy and then when you play the Turks it's like oh the knights have got it so easy so it's a it's it's a fun game it's a difficult game it's a challenging game but I I really get a kick out of them good strategic choices mitigated or you know influenced heavily by luck but you do have those good choices and it's a story these games play out these great great stories that i really enjoy so recommendation for the discriminating gamer for uh 1565 siege of malta is yes absolutely buy it Thank you once again for joining us today on The Discriminating Gamer. As always, we ask you to please leave a comment for us on YouTube, on Board Game Geek, on our Facebook page, or on thediscriminatinggamer.com. We'd ask you to please like us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and follow us on Twitter. I'd also ask you, ladies and gentlemen, to please check out my other channel, that is Cody Carlson PhD, where we talk about military history and books on history and fun things like that. Please check it out. Please subscribe. And please, I would ask you to give a thumb to this video on Board Game Geek. That helps us out a lot as well. You know, ladies and gentlemen, I've recently decided to become a Renaissance man. Or go Baroque trying. Hey, somebody help me on my feet again. And I don't know where I'm going and I don't know where I've been. Please somebody help me on the solid ground. It's a long time and I'll be dying. Once a year I wind up in the band. Ladies and gentlemen, today we're going to go ahead and take a look at... Fifth...